From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only news program that gives you all the super news all the time. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen with this week's top news stories. An Alpha City grand jury today announced that it would not be seeking an indictment against the Leaping Lizard and Captain Zap over the possible death of the villain Vortex two years ago. Dr. Antonio Gans became the deadly Vortex after an experiment he was conducting into the creation of artificial black holes went awry and he found himself with one such black hole embedded in his chest, which would absorb anything that crossed a certain point where his skin used to be. The accident and the subsequent realization that the black hole was slowly spreading, eating more and more of his body as it did so, had an understandably negative effect on Dr. Gans's psyche, and he became obsessed with feeding the so-called Hungry God, his name for his affliction. By the time of the events which led to Vortex's possible demise, the black hole in Gans's chest had spread to the point where his entire torso was simply a gaping blank between his upper legs and the lower part of his face, where his mouth had previously been. Vortex had appeared and rampaged without reason or focus across the town of Everdale, just northwest of Alpha City, absorbing large parts of two buildings, an estimated 13 cars, and four civilians. The Leaping Lizard and Captain Zap had been the first to respond to calls for help, and had, as they testified before the grand jury, intended to simply distract Vortex until either the ACPD superhuman response team or a suitably powered hero could contain the villain. All too quickly, though, things spiraled out of control as Vortex was able to catch hold of Captain Zap. Faced with the threat of Captain Zap being lost in Vortex's black hole, the Leaping Lizard attempted to wrestle with Vortex and inadvertently forced one of the villain's own arms into the event horizon, beyond which it is almost impossible for anything to escape. As horrified onlookers watched, more and more of Vortex's body was drawn into the all-consuming maelstrom which had become a part of him, folding the villain into a smaller and smaller space until, with an explosive outrush of air, he vanished completely. The grand jury, based on the fact that there was no proof that Vortex's so-called quantum collapse had caused him to actually die, and considering that the hero Empyrean had been forced into Vortex's black hole and had managed to return without adverse effect, concluded that preferring charges based on the killing of Vortex were premature. While the case is not yet closed, both Captain Zap and the Leaping Lizard are, for the time being, clear of all charges. Super scientist Dr. Voy Angar reports that he has built a machine to transport objects to and from what he calls the macro zone, the area of reality just above ours. Dr. Angar has visited the macro zone previously, spending two years of Earth time there after making contact with one of the native science priests of the zone and being drawn there to aid with the native struggle against invaders who sought to subjugate them from a zone even larger than theirs. It was during this period that Macrozone native and hero Sig Nomad first came to our world, apparently as a balance to the disappearance of Dr. Angar. Dr. Angar is confident that the new method of zone travel he has invented will do away with the need for individuals to exchange place from zone to zone in order to maintain universal balance. Dr. Angar plans to spend six months of local time in the macro zone on this trip, which will take approximately one year of Earth time. The scientific data he hopes to return with is expected to be quite valuable in extending our knowledge of the universe. (music) 
Sebastian F. reports that Presto has left our plane of existence to search for her lost enemy, Glamazon. While no love is lost between the heroine and the villainess, Presto could not, in good conscience, allow Glamazon to languish in whatever netherworld to which she had been banished by evil sorceress Witchfinger. Presto is apparently hoping that this effort will allow her to return Glamazon, not to our world, but to the Amazon-controlled Alter Earth from which she hails. Mr. If assures us that, even with Spell Magister Presto absent from our plane of existence, all magical threats will be ably handled by himself, the Cloak of Night, Edwin Shergi, the Girl with the Key, the Looking Glass Man, Mando Church, the inimitable Mr. Fang, and the rest of the Circle of Sorcery. The Conundrum Corporation had to deal with a near-mass breakout of villains being held at their incarceration atoll this past week. Clonus, the man who can be anyone, had somehow managed to replace Charter Conundrum Corporation member Lance Logan and hitched a ride to the mysterious hidden atoll when the Conundrumites headed there to replenish supplies. Before other members J.T. Chance, Iron Irv Fishbine, Chet Maddox, and the lovely Evangeline Decane knew it, the Ertzatz Lance had freed some of their most dangerous opponents, including Mad Goat, the Questioneer, the Anamorphic Man, Grando the Amazing, Frisbee Knot, Herb Tanner, and Mr. Drab. Chet Maddox told intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston that it was touch and go for the puzzlement posse over the course of the day it took to corral all of the escaped baddies but that in the end, only the Frisbee Knot and Herb Tanner had managed to effect a permanent escape. This includes Clonus, who had come to the island to set other criminals free, but had, in the end, found himself in a cell next to most of them. Maddox also added that while the mystery crew were happy that more criminals had not escaped, they would be on the hunt for those that had while also trying to answer the burning question, where is Lance Logan? That's the news for this week, but be sure to tune in this evening at 8 p.m. for Siobhan McRoy and Book Talk. This evening, Siobhan will be talking to Leonard Marcus about his book review bestseller, A Day Like Any Other. This seeming slice-of-life tale of one day in the life of the Anderson family actually takes place in a world where all the things we take for granted do not exist. No superheroes or villains, no alien races, no magic, nothing that makes up the everyday world of Alpha City. Oh, there is science, but not the science we know. Critics are calling it a surprising, fascinating view of a world superficially like the real one, but with deep and important differences. Schwann and Leonard Marcus will spend an hour discussing the inspiration behind what some are heralding as a new form of fiction, already being referred to as average lit. That's Schwann McRoy and Book Talk, 8 p.m. tonight, here on ACM. You've been listening to Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. Sorry for the short episode this week. If you get a chance, please leave a review on iTunes or a like at SoundCloud or RhymesWithGeek.com. If you'd like to become a patron of the show, you can sign up at Patreon.com. Just search for Alpha City News. You can also follow us on Twitter or Facebook, or send an email to AlphaCityNews at gmail.com. We'd certainly love to hear from you. See you next week.